This is the first painting that I've completed using one of my previous artworks as reference, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, years ago, I made this very crude, not very accurate example of a human skull out of uh, a few pounds of air dry clay. Um, the reason why I am mentioning it is because I am going to show you my collection of skulls. So this one here is one of my first air dry uh, clay sculptures. Uh, basically, I was just getting a feel for the product. Um, I This is not a very good or impressive example of one of my sculptures. Not that I'm the best sculptor. I'm definitely not. I'm also not the best painter, but I like to uh, mess around with different mediums. Typically, I like to... Uh, you know, sculpt with steel, with welding, or even with wood. Um, and I've shown you my collection of junk that I use to create my sculptures. But uh, I also like using clay, and I've done a few uh, better clay sculptures as well. Um, but anyway, I was recently asked, what do I collect besides junk for art uh, for myself? What do I collect just to enjoy having it? And... Uh, one of the things that I thought of that I thought might be of interest to some of you is um, skulls. I collect skulls. None of them are human skulls. They're all animal skulls, but to me, they're just fascinating. While this is drying here, I think I will show you the first one here. The first skull I want to show you is my biggest and my most favorite in my collection. This here is a bull bison skull, also called an American buffalo. A buffalo and a bison are not the same animal, but when you think of buffalo, you're probably picturing this. It's just become an accepted name for this animal. Uh, this one here uh, was a gift from someone who actually uh, gave this to me for reference to build them a scrap metal version. Um, and then after I completed it, they let me keep the reference. So I will continue to use this as reference for future sculptures as well. This one here was raised for meat on a bison farm. You can see it's got a bolt hole or maybe even a high-powered uh, handgun hole in the forehead. Uh, bisons have really thick skulls, more so than, than cattle, so I'm not sure exactly how it was killed, but... Probably one of those two methods. Obviously one of those two methods. Yeah, this one has been sun bleached, so it's a little rough, but I don't care. It's relatively uh, intact. It is missing some bones here and there, but that's okay. It's really cool to have this one in my collection. It's not the biggest buffalo skull I have seen, but it is still pretty big, but they do get bigger than this one here. The second skull I want to show you is also a bison skull, but this one is a cow. It's a female. It's almost as big as the, uh, as the bull that I have, so it's kind of weird that it doesn't have any horns. I'm not sure why it didn't grow any horns. Maybe it's a domestication thing. I'm not sure. Maybe not all females do grow horns, but I do know that it is typical for a female bison to grow horns. Uh, this one is relatively intact. It is missing some pieces, as are most of my skulls. Also missing some teeth. Um, but this will work great for reference if I ever want to do a female bison skull. Uh, this one came from the same place, uh, a meat farm. It doesn't have a bolt hole or anything in the forehead, so I'm not sure how this one was killed, but uh, it did come from the same place and was raised for meat. All in all, like this piece. It's not in pristine condition. Again, it's been sun bleached just like the other one, but I like it. I wanted to have a female and male example in my small collection here. This next one here is another bison cow. However, this one did grow horns, although they were broken off at some point. They could have even been chewed off by some other animal. I'm not sure. This one came from the same meat farm. It doesn't have a a bullet hole or a bolt hole in its forehead so I'm not sure how this one was put down but uh, I wanted this one for my collection because 
it looked interesting having its horns kind of gnawed off like that. So yeah, I don't think I would use this one for reference necessarily, although if it was the only one I had, it would serve well enough. It's relatively intact and it's still good for referencing size and whatnot. Took this one because I thought it was interesting. The last bison in my collection is my most incomplete. This one here has some serious damage to the face. And I'm not sure what happened to this one. It didn't come from the same farm, uh, so I didn't get any information. I don't actually remember where I got this one from. If I had to guess, I would say that it was run over by something, or maybe animals got to it or something. I don't think that this happened while it was alive. I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't have a bolt hole or anything, so I'm not sure if this was uh, raised for meat or what. To me, it just looks like it's a young male that may have died prematurely. I'm guessing that it's a male because it's so small and it already has horns that were getting quite big. These ones were chewed up quite a bit, so you can't really tell. I know sometimes, or oftentimes, you can tell a male or female based on the shape, but these ones were chewed quite a bit, so I'm just, I'm just guessing. This one is not suitable for much in terms of reference, but I took it because I thought it was super interesting. It has a built-in story. I just don't know what the story is. For this one, uh, I will probably polish this one up at some point. It's very badly sun bleached, but I think the contrast between a nice polished finish and the heavy damage would be pretty cool. So I'll be hanging this one uh, along with the other ones on the wall, even though it's so damaged. It's just so cool. Next we have another Canadian monster. Uh, this is more wild than bison typically are these days. Uh, this is a Canadian moose with the most pathetic antlers. <laughs> but that's because uh, something else chewed them into nubs. Normally there are these huge paddles that are quite impressive. Uh, but these ones were destroyed from some other animal. I'm not sure if this one was hunted or if it was, died naturally and that's why the antlers are destroyed. I can't be certain. I got this one uh, as a gift from my friend Alex who owns an antique store. But you can't buy or sell uh, game remains in Canada so uh, he just had it on display and then asked if I wanted it. And which I do. You're allowed to give them away and you're allowed to own them. You just can't buy or sell them. This one has some discoloration to it. I'm not sure exactly what that's from. Probably the oils or something in it did that. I, I'm not sure. But this one will be perfect for referencing skull proportions and whatnot. And I have other moose racks that I can use for reference for the, for the antlers. It's still relatively intact for the most part. And it's the only moose skull that I have. The next skull I have is not from an animal that is typically used for meat where I'm from. Uh, although I do know some people do uh, eat horses, just not really around here. So this is a horse skull uh, that has been very heavily damaged. I believe that this one was buried and then accidentally unburied and its face was crushed. And then it was acquired by uh, a, one of the gallery owners who then gifted it to me when she uh, moved locations. So kind of a cool piece. Not really good for reference, but uh, I will probably end up polishing this one similar to the one crushed bison skull. I'm not sure exactly though. In any case, I really like it. This next one is very different than all of the other ones I've showed so far. It is way heavier and obviously uh, handmade. This is not, uh, not a real skull. This one is just made out of scrap steel. It's probably the most obvious skull to own around here. There are plenty of cattle uh, farms around, but I do not own a real cattle skull. Uh, but I did borrow one to use as reference to make this. Uh, this started off uh, with finding these two whatever they are, my grandfather found them on the train tracks and I thought they would make perfect bull horns. So here we have a bull skull uh, made out of scrap metal. I'll put a link in the description in case you want to see the build process. Probably the only skull more obvious to own would be a deer skull. 
and I also don't have one of those. Next, moving on from the, uh, the meat animals, if you will, uh, we have this guy right here. This, we're pretty sure, is a coyote skull. Uh, this was found by my brother in the middle of the British Columbia rainforest while gold mining. It probably was killed by other coyotes or wolves or something like that. It still has pretty good teeth, so it probably didn't die of natural causes, like old age or something like that. Uh, that's pretty rare in the wild. Um, it might be a little bit too big to be a coyote skull. I'm not exactly sure, but I am pretty certain that it is a canine based off of this ridge right here. Uh, I know my dog had a, a bump here, a goofy bump here, and I'm pretty sure that's from having a prominent crest or whatever the heck this is called. So, pretty sure this is a canine. It is pretty well intact. It's just missing some teeth, which may help further identify it. I'm actually not sure how to tell the difference between a dog or a uh, coyote or a wolf if they have similar uh, bone structure. Um, but yeah, this will work perfect for reference if I want to use it to uh, to make a dog or wolf or coyote sculpture. I feel pretty lucky to be able to own this because in Canada, unless you're First Nations, it is illegal to own predator remains without a permit. So if you hunted the animal legally, you don't have anything to worry about because the proper paperwork is built into your hunting permit. But if you find something and you don't get a permit to keep it, it can be uh, seized and you can be fined for having it. And uh, even if you do apply for a permit, oftentimes it will still be taken away from you uh, for any number of reasons. Oftentimes it's because a fish and wildlife officer may suspect poaching or something like that, or it's an endangered species or they need it for science or whatever else. So. Really happy that I don't have to worry about that. I can keep this in my collection without any issues. Next, we have almost the exact opposite of the last skull. This here is a cat sculpture. I'm not sure what breed, but just a common house cat type cat. <laughs> this one actually is a little bit deformed, which is kind of interesting, but this would serve as a perfect example to use as reference for making uh, sculptures uh, if I if I ever wanted to make one of those. This actually came from my neighbor. This one was buried. It had died. They buried it and then something unburied it and uh, so they kept it and then gave it to me a little while ago. Cool example to have in the collection. This next skull I would probably have a really hard time identifying uh, if it didn't have such prominent front chompers. It is missing so much of its head here. Uh, but it is very obviously a beaver skull um, based off of its two front teeth. It's funny how beavers are always depicted in cartoons as having like nice white shiny front teeth, but if you've ever seen one in the wild, they're actually disgustingly yellow. <laughs> so. Fun fact, these ones here are brown. That's probably just some discoloration or maybe that's just how they are. Maybe I'm actually seeing just wet brown turned into like this ambery yellow. They're really disgusting. Their molars are interesting. They actually kind of look like elephant teeth to me. This one was found somewhere on the river. These are uh, legal to hunt on private property all year round because they are uh, considered a pest because they are very damaging to uh, infrastructure and waterways uh, due to displacement oftentimes. Um, but yeah, really cool to have in the collection. Not very suitable uh, as a reference because it's missing so much. It has a lot of damage. Looks like it actually was being gnawed on by something. But I like it. This is it guys. The last skull in my collection. And it's the only one that still has its mandible intact. Uh, intact is probably the wrong word because it falls apart really easily, but I don't have the mandible bones for any of the other skulls that I have, just this one right here. This is uh, 
far from complete. It's missing a lot of its eye bones, its orbital bones or whatever you call them. It's missing all of its nose bones, but it has a bunch of its little teeny tiny bones elsewhere. It's really cool. This is actually a rabbit that was found by my brother in a box of Snow White animation cells. I'm not exactly sure what it was doing there, but it makes for a really cool story. Although a very short story because I don't know anything else about it. Just kind of cool. Nice to have this in the collection. It's pretty dirty. Still got a lot of uh, sinew and whatnot attached to it, but that doesn't bother me too much. I know that people boil their skulls or get those bugs to clean them off. I'm not sure if this is too small, but regardless, I'm not too worried about it much. Maybe one day I'll clean it up a little bit if I feel like learning more about bones and whatnot. This is not the best example for reference purposes, although all of these are intact enough that I could just use my imagination to finish them off. There are people who take tiny bone fragments and render full skeleton models off of them. That one just sits right there. Now I may as well finish this painting. Well, I hope you guys liked my first show and tell. I enjoyed showing you my uh, small skull collection. I know to some it will be relatively unimpressive and to others skulls are not your cup of tea, but that's okay. I, uh, I like all sorts of different tea, so maybe one of the next show and tells you will enjoy. Uh, so thanks for watching. In the meantime, I am going to finish up this painting here. Now, quickly, I'll have Vincent show you some of the other skulls I have made. Done. If you like this show and tell, I'll try to make more. Thanks for watching.